All right, hey YouTube, how's it going? Today, we're going to be talking about what is the best, the most healthy sleeping positions. Without further ado, let's just jump into it. None of them. Just sleep in the position that's most comfortable for you. I mean, plain and simply, that's all it is. But let me explain. We change position in our sleep up to 44 times per night. It's quite a high number. With children moving more than seniors in their sleep, and young healthy men that have been found to change positions approximately on average 32 times a night, adopting an average of seven different sleeping positions per evening. So basically it's pretty much impossible to stay in one healthy position or maintain a neutral spine for the entire evening. We chop and change moving in and out of different positions all the time. Hello, it's Brad from the future here and while editing this video I realized that I skipped one slide for some reason, this one, and it states that all the available evidence we have about sleeping postures and positions show no association with pathologies such as spinal symptoms or shoulder pain. That's pretty much it, we'll discuss it a little bit more in the future. Sure, some individuals may need to adopt different positions depending on their age, BMI and certain health conditions. For example, elderly individuals sleep less on their stomachs, um, which is a position called prone. If you have unilateral hip or shoulder pain, so shoulder pain or hip pain on one side, obviously you may have to avoid that side and sleep on the other side. Those with sleep apnea may need to avoid sleeping on their back. And those with back pain or neck pain uh, that have sensitivity going into an extended position may need to avoid a prone sleeping position or sleeping on their stomach yet again. But as long as you find a position that is comfortable for you and allows you to fall asleep easily, then that's all you need. Let's discuss. I'm sure I'm not the only person that has seen all of these different recommended sleeping positions that have been advocated by healthcare providers themselves. You should be sleeping with a straight neutral spine. You should be using two pillows in between your knees, one under your neck, one behind your back. Um, otherwise you might die. This, just like posture itself, is a very old school biomechanically driven piece of treatment or advice that has never really held any real validity. I can understand why some might think it. If you didn't know that we moved so much every single evening, you'd probably think that we, we may perhaps stay in the exact static position for eight hours straight. And staying in the same position for too long has been thought to cause, you know, muscle stiffness, shortening, and perhaps even contractures. But this doesn't occur because we do in fact move for the remaining 16 hours of the day. The other part of the problem may be the idea that having a neutral spine is protective and anything else is potentially harmful. This just isn't true. I've kind of deconstructed this idea within a previous video, so I'm just gonna keep it short. But if we weren't allowed or if we weren't supposed to be bending forward, backwards, side to side, rotating so much, then our spines simply wouldn't be designed in the way that they currently are. Moving on to the research, we do seem to shift our positions on the upper end of 44 times per night, according to this 1992 study. Yeah, it's old research, but the very next paper I cite seems to be concordant with this figure. You do seem to move around a little bit more the younger that you are and it seems that this may go hand in hand with the more healthy you are. We see for obvious reasons those who have specific injuries or are post-surgery tend to move a lot less in the evenings and we see that those who are older spend less time in prone and more time in static sleeping positions. This doesn't mean that sleeping posture matters because that lower end figure within the older individuals, those aged from 65 to 80 years old, 
still seem to shift and move around 16 or 17 times a night. It's impossible to maintain one position. Plus, is it just me who thinks it's absolutely ridiculous for you and your partner to have to share eight pillows between the both of you just to be in a healthy sleeping position every single evening? Even if you sleep on your back, they then say, you know, your lower back is still going to, to I don't know, arch. So you should have a pillow or two underneath your knees and still one under your neck. Yeah, it's a little bit ridiculous if you ask me. Let's talk on the pathology side. The thing is that we don't have much data on this. So to be honest, it is quite difficult to draw a conclusion. These two papers showed that sleeping positions weren't associated with any increased risk of spinal symptoms or rotator cuff tears, even in positions that had people sleeping with their hands overhead. I did cherry pick this a little bit because I did find other evidence that seemed to show that the side lying position or, you know, sleeping on your side was to be protective and associated with better sleep. But in individuals with already existing pathology. So those with already existing neck and back pain, the side lying position seemed to be a better position than complete prone or supine but no shit if you have an ailment and you find one position to be a little bit provocative then simply avoid it and find a comfortable position for sure there are certain positions that are going to be more provocative if you have neck or back or shoulder or hip pain but in this case i doubt you need a healthcare professional to tell you how you should be sleeping just listen to your body and figure it out for yourself and with that, let's move on to the final point. Some individuals will need to adopt positions for obvious reasons, but it doesn't mean that the others are flawed at all. It's obviously a individual case by case dependent situation. It's like with most things in life and musculoskeletal health, what works for some may not work for others. Like we said, Posture and sleeping positions change with age. This may due to skeletal changes and comfort. We see that people that are elderly tend to develop more of a, you know, carphotic posture. They tend to get a little bit more stiff. Maybe they have a little bit more symptoms of arthritis and that type of thing. So obviously, maybe sleeping in prone or on your stomach may be a little bit less comfortable for elderly individuals and that's why we see them less likely to be sleeping in prone and on that note a lot of these individuals elderly individuals may lack the range of motion in their neck to comfortably sleep on their stomach because you kind of have to turn your neck around 90 degrees to the side in order to breathe properly bmi or body mass index of course for example an obese individual is obviously going to struggle a little bit more to sleep in prone as well if your shoulders or your shoulder is sore yet again prone may also be a provocative position requiring you to keep your arms overhead or um, this can be also said with sleeping on your side so positions such as sleeping on the opposing side will be more comfortable especially because you may be able to rest your sore arm on a pillow sleep apnea obviously if you're using a cpap machine uh, you'll most likely need to sleep on your back but if not if your if your sleep apnea is not that severe then a side lying or a prone position may be a preferred position to ease your symptoms and back pain this goes both ways if extension is sensitive then prone isn't going to be fun you can always put a pillow underneath your abdomen or your pelvis to help with this there are certain adjustments that could be made dependent on the individual's specific case but they're self-explanatory you know if you have pain or back pain associated with flexion then perhaps sleeping on your stomach and being in a little bit of extension is actually a good thing i'll say it one more time any position as long as it allows you to fall asleep comfortably is the best position the most important thing is that you're focusing on habits that help you maintain good quality sleep from there just make sure that you're comfortable enough to doze off as quickly as possible and that's it that's all i have to say 
Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and if you have any questions, concerns, comments, critiques or recommendations. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.